So we've got the floor fully removed on Lee's E46 now. That inner rectangle section which is covered with the green word and blanket is the entrance into the car. And we've removed the whole lot all the way up to the front train line pockets, they're all removed as well. So this is a new floor ready to go in and um, we've done our separations of the items required to uh, to get this in. Spring perches needed to come off because they're on the uh, they're already on the car anyway. You need to take this front section off to do some MIG welds underneath those. That's in the BMW instructions. These are the brackets for the fuel pipe flexi hoses and we take them off so that we can separate the front trailing arm sections. Um, nearly impossible to get this in in one piece. Um, so we do these in trailing arm sections. So we've done our We've punched our holes for the plug weld in all the way around the perimeter and we've drilled those out to the 8mm um, spot weld drill bits and then on the back we've done a full etch prime just for some added protection. So we've got our jig installed now on the rear axle carrier panel which is uh, situ cleaned up and situated in place. And this is just a jig we made and welded together just so that we know the uh, panel is in perfect orientation to the um, trailing arms, pockets, and also so that when we lower the car down before we start any welding, we make sure everything's obviously lining up, bolts up fine, which it has, um, and then we can we can rest the weight of the car on this jig onto um, various different platforms, uh, a bit like a how a jig table would work, where you would weight the car down onto onto the, the jig pickup points rather than just relying on traditional um, welding clamps like these ones here. And then once there's weight on the car holding all this, um, sandwiching the, the new rear axle carrier panel in to the floor, or to the chassis, then we can start our welding process. The new floor is in place and we've done uh, plug welds or rosette welds down the side in the OEM locations. These are replacing all the spot welds that we drilled out to get the panel out. Uh, but we're not just going to leave those, we're going to stitch weld the panel in between all those as well. Just, uh, just to give it a lot more strength. Same again with the right side. All the spot welds which we drilled out to remove the panel have been replaced with plug welds or rosette welds and some stitches in the OEM locations. There is normally three there but I did an extra one just to hold it in and we're going to continue stitching all the way down the sides uh, as well as obviously round the back, round the front and then on the inner rectangle as well. Rear axle carrier panel is now fully welded in. All the spring perches plug welded. The inner rectangle, which you can see the stitch welds penetrated through, and the um, plug welds on that inner rectangle. And then the rear seams stitched, plug weld all in the factory areas. And then we've done additional stitches where the panels overlap for extra strength. We've now finished all our welding inside as well. Uh, you can see the black inner rectangle here which is the, uh, the upper part of the floor rear axle carrier panel which is visible from inside the car and this is our, uh, our front section which is that extra reinforcement panel. You can see the factory five and another five plug welds on the other side and then you can see that we've from the underside we've stitched it as well which is uh, these marks here to show good penetration. We've also stitched the rear seat section back to the internal chassis because that had cracked what well, popped on two spot welds and the same on the other side and then we've done our factory plug welds which were all drilled out all the way around the inner rectangle and then we've also stitched these as well 
just to give the panel even more strength. And then we've also added our own reinforcement internal sort of third chassis leg you would probably call that. We're obviously in the car looking backwards now into the into the boot area. This is our box channel that we've uh, we've carefully measured, cut, welded into the sort of the internal chassis leg structure, which is always good and sound and solid on these, never breaks. And then we've also st we've stitched the the new floor panel to the central chassis leg. We're going to call that uh, just to give that panel more stability, rather than it relying on the flimsy um, spare wheel section, which is very very flimsy, as you saw in the previous videos. Uh, so that obviously was damaged because it had come across, come away from the chassis leg down there in the distance. You can just see where we've stitched the chassis leg, it back to the chassis leg, and uh, and I'll show you the other side of this now. This is the view from the other side, so we're we're looking into the boot now. You can see this is the spare wheel well section, if it had one on an M3. And you can see where the factory plug welds have been done to join the, the new rear axle carrier panel to the rest of the chassis. Uh, and then we've also done stitch welds on the other side, which have penetrated through to show good penetration. Also done a full weld section on the inside rather than four factory spot welds that hold that corner better. Even managed to get it down into that corner as well. And then this is our new third chassis leg, we're going to call that central chassis leg which is the uh, the structure which has been welded in. These haven't been dusted down yet so they've still got MIG dust on them but you can see that the bar is obviously fully welded into the into the legs on either side. Rear axle carrier panel on that side and the spare wheel well section which is obviously it was a flimsy section as you saw. Uh, and then we've made, uh, this is cold drawn steel seamless tube, which is uh, exactly what roll cage is made out of, 2 mil thick, 40 mil diameter, and that's been profiled to fit over the T-press section in the rear axle carrier panel, and it's been welded directly above the threaded receivers, uh, into the floor, all the way round, we managed to get some in inside as well, and then this has been welded directly to the support, so that's just going to help with the loadings and the torsional twisting of the rear axle carrier panel, I'm going to spread it into uh, into a into a third bar as well as the uh, factory folded panels that it touches. And this car is also going to have BMW structural foam as well, so it's going to be a really really strong repair.